Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Deathmatch Daddy Boga, and you're listening to or watching Drinking at Moe's. Everybody, welcome to Drinking at Moe's. Your host, Big Mo here. A bit of a Deathmatch week this week. Yesterday, interviewing Tank. Tomorrow, interviewing John Wayne Murdoch. Today, I got with me my good friend, the Omaha Deathmatch Daddy, Bo God. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. How about you, Big Mo? Oh, <clears throat> doing all right. Had a bit of a busy, busy weekend this last week with, you know, some family stuff and finding out the genders of my wife and I's uh, twins were expecting. That's so, great, man. Yeah, no, it's gonna. I'm I'm a mixture of excited and nervous on that, and then, you know, the, the week before that, I had the whole trip down to Warrior Wrestling, which was something else. Did you uh, did you end up making it down to Atumwa for Bridge, what Bridge City Slam or whatever that is? I wanted to, but it ended up being the same day that my one of my wife's cousins volunteered to throw us the gender reveal party. Oh, okay. But uh, I actually talked with Austin Bayless and planning on uh, planning on next year trying to trying to make it down there for that. I mean, it seems it seems like he's got a whole lot of cool stuff that, that goes on, and I seen he was going to make like a two day event. So yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. Oh yeah, no, this next year happening a little earlier than this year, being like I believe tail end of April, but. Should be pretty fun. Yeah, oh yeah. But uh, introducing you here, I, you know, those that have watched the YouTube version of this, you actually your second time on, it first is. time on when I switched up the format to podcast and YouTube. But uh, the moniker there, the Omaha Deathmatch Daddy. Why don't you explain to? Some of the people that might not have watched the first time around, where that came from. So back in like 2018, right before I took a little break from wrestling, one of my buddies, uh, Chris Bach Elder, um, would come up to me. And it was probably like, it was after the Taipei death match that I had with Joe at Magnum's mm -hmm. anniversary. And he, he came up to me, he's like, I'm going to start calling you the death match daddy. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> Cool. And then I ended up quitting wrestling like three months later. <laughs> so like, so I just kind of, when I came back to wrestling, I was like, maybe I should try to run with it. But like, you know, I don't like get out and travel as much as I would like to as much. But so I kind of, I kind of wrestle around in the Omaha area generally. So, and that's where I've had most of my death matches at. So I kind of just put on the Omaha death match daddy there. You know, maybe we should, uh, get some more of those books so we can really run with it yeah i mean it'd be it'd be all right like there's a i'm not gonna talk too much about this because i'm not supposed to but there's gonna be a company around des moines that's gonna be doing some stuff here fairly soon uh -huh. um a book with another company in iowa that does that kind of style of wrestling too. Mm. but i can't i can't you know say which companies these are yet until i'm announced for them you know, I I won't, you know, I don't want to spoil anything, don't want to cause you any issues, but would this happen to be the uh, promotion I just saw that uh, you, uh, like, quote tweeted something from them a little uh, bit see, ago? I can't confirm nor deny any of this. Not until, see, I, I'm very, I'm very quiet about this stuff still. Sometimes I still believe in the <laughs> a fave, so... No, uh, I, I can't blame you. That's only, all right. Only sometimes, though. But yeah, I'm only wrestling <laughs> for a couple companies here that does more of like the hardcore style of wrestling, which is honestly what I got into wrestling for in the first place. Like when I first started training, I was, I I would watch CZW uh, DVDs mm -hmm. and it had Sam Mondo on there, and he was like, he was the guy that I kind of like was just like, you know, if he can do this, I can do this too. Like. Mm. And so I did. And then, you know, I, I brought some of that, 
I brought some of that stuff to like, you know, when it was necessary. Yeah. Or the promoter would let me. Like, I would, you know, bring a lot more of that kind of like extreme type of elements to it when mm-hmm. I can. Gotcha. I mean, you bring up uh, Nick Mondo there and CZW. As far as Nick Mondo, he was actually there at the end of the tournament of survival kind of helping present the eventual winner drew parker with the uh that big ass trophy they had yeah i i didn't get to catch it i caught last year's but i didn't get to catch this year's i was actually i was wrestling in omaha this weekend so oh yeah i didn't i didn't get to catch much wrestling this weekend plus i'm I, working 74 hours a week so that's been kind of rough too yeah, that, that kind of puts a little damper on being able to watch some of the stuff going on out there. Mm-hmm. But, but uh, yeah, no, that was a pretty solid show. Like, people like people crap on Deathmatch Wrestling. Like, one of my notes here, I've heard a lot of people compare it to, like, backyard wrestling, but you get promotions like a gcw and there's a icw no holds barred that's been doing some pretty interesting stuff then i mean they actually put in i mean they got deathmatch but they got you know regular stuff mixed in with it so you don't but, in my opinion they do it they do it good yeah i like what i like about deathmatch wrestling like today is like it's not just like back kind of back kind of when i was like really kind of starting to watch it it was like get hit hit stuff hit stuff but like like building around like the weapons and like building the match around using something to where it's not just like i think that's where it got like a really bad stigma because people didn't really know how to do like hardcore wrestling yeah and so but like you know you got your like groups like czw and everything that that did do it right back in the day and like it's like it's not just like okay like you know, I'm going to hit you with this and then you're going to hit me with this. Like th- there's a story told behind yeah. it, which, which you see that a lot more nowadays too, which is very, which is very cool. Oh yeah. No, that's one of the things I definitely like about GCW where they, they actually had Nick Gage on commentary during a lot of the tournament of survival and even a little bit there during the cages survival show where he brought up, you know, sitting in the, the, I mean, more typical wrestling into a death match and, you know, building a story around it, you mm-hmm. know, not just, okay, here's a light to bam, like building, like you said, the story around all of it. Yeah. Like when death match wrestling is done right, it's super good. Mm. Yeah, no, and I I firmly believe with that, uh, well, both shows this weekend, but I brought it up. I did a weekly recap where I went over the Tournament of Survival, and they had a few people from over in Japan. I can't pronounce the one guy's name. Toru Sigsu. I, I just call him Toru. And then Rina Yamashita, who has been no no stranger to GCW, they fit in that like Japanese strong style and really mixed it in there with the mm-hmm. the uh, deathmatch style, which I I for one really loved. Yeah, uh, the uh, like a, a good company to watch from Japan, like that does deathmatch wrestling regularly, is uh, Big Japan Pro Wrestling. They do a lot of cool I've stuff. heard a lot of them. If you want to get into like some old, I've heard a lot of good about them. If you want to get into yeah. some old school Japanese wrestling, like deathmatch wrestling, look up FMW. Oh and, yeah, FMW with like uh, Mike Awesome and Masato Tanaka and those guys. And then there yeah. was a there was <laughs> no, a company they, called there was a company called Wing, which was cool. Oh so, yeah. I've heard a little bit about them. I've seen some of their stuff, with, you know, looking around on YouTube. 
But yeah, no, Japanese, they they definitely know how to do the deathmatch style, that's for sure. Um, we talked a little bit about CZW. They seem to kind of fall on the radar side. I mean, I heard they kind of got away from the, or, or trying to get away from the deathmatch style lately. And I don't know, it seemed to kind of, like I said, made them fall off the radar. Yeah, I, 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 to be honest with you, I haven't quite followed CZW probably since 2013, 2014. But um, you, you were you were saying about CZW and yeah, I haven't, I haven't really followed them like since like 2013, 2014. Like I would try to catch like the occasional like Cage of Death. Mm. And like uh, tournament of death, but like kind of once GCW kind of started going, like I I really started getting into that a lot more. And speaking of them, it's seeming that uh, you know a lot of the people that were in the deathmatch stuff with CCW once GCW started, kind of migrated over there. Like everybody from the ring announcer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I mean. I can't complain. They GCW, they sure know how to do it. Yeah, they do. Um, but I mean I, um, I did I did see like CZW is like making a little bit of a comeback, but they're doing just mostly like, you know, typical matches, like regular matches. So which I mean good for them. Like, you know, if they yeah, wanna no you know, if they wanna run, I mean, more power to them. Like I'm never gonna I'm never gonna crap on anybody that wants to you know run shows or do anything like that you know yeah no if they want to give it a run i mean like you said i know i'd be willing to at least watch i know i had at one point heard back with them on trying to get somebody for my show but then they kind of just stopped responding yeah uh i actually did a tryout with them back in 2013 trying to no kidding yeah uh shane hollister was booked out there so i think shane wanted kind of a fighting buddy from iowa to ohio and so he brought me with he brought me with him for an ohio show and they were doing like a like a tryout training camp type deal and so i did it like okay I mean, I didn't get a call back, which is okay. Like, I don't think I was ready for that yet. So, but yeah. And then a, another company, no. I, another company I was really into was IWA Mid South. Oh yeah, yeah. I I actually I wrestled on a few of their shows too. I did a uh, I did their first ever Prince of the Death matches there. Ooh. Back in 2010. Okay. And then I wrestled a couple other shows, but like. I, I had just started wrestling in like 2008 and I kind of, I didn't yeah. really like travel a whole lot back then. Yeah. So I didn't have a lot of experience under my belt. And so yeah. I kind of, I kind of crapped the bed there. So <laughs> I think Dude. I had, I, I think I had one of Jason Strife's worst matches ever. Oh, no. at WA mid South. <laughs> <laughs> and that was, I mean, it was all on me. Like that was all on me. <laughs> So I was just so nervous and we got there, we got there, I want to say like 15 minutes before the show started and oh. me and Strife, me and Strife were the first ones on, on. Oh boy. So, yep. Yeah. Got there right on time. Yeah. But Prince of the death matches was really cool. I, I wrestled in a bull rope barbed wire canvas match with Ron Mathis. Ooh. So that was, that was an experience, which I mean, I, I did all right in that, but. What was that one like? Like I've never heard of. I mean, so, there's like, so many types of death matches. That's one I haven't really heard of. So like me and me and Ron were attached to each other's wrists, like a regular bull rope match, like a Texas bull rope match. But yeah. there's barbed wire that strung the canvas. So from one end to the other, there was barbed wire, and they had like four or five strips, or I would say probably like ten strips of barbed wire. You can find oh. it on. You can find it on YouTube. I look completely different. Like I had hair. I didn't have a beard. Um, I'm, I'm going to have to go look that one up. So, 
Uh, and then it was like, you could touch four corners or you could, uh, or you could make a pinfall to win. Okay. So there's a, there, I, that, there, that's one of my death matches. I think I have on YouTube. There might be one from, they, they might, I might actually have my very first death match on there too, from a little company called MXWA that used to run in Muscatine, Iowa. Oh, you know what? Uh, I think I actually attended their very last show. Was that with like Levi McDaniel and Chief and Yeah. 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 One of so, one of my good friends that used to live with my wife and me, uh he's good buddies with Chief and was like, Hey, you wanna you wanna go to the show? I'm like, eh, hell, why not? Yeah. No, I uh, I did a death match with Chief there, and that was like the uh-huh. first real death match that I've ever had. It's nice. Yeah, that that last show of theirs, I they were trying to find somebody to hold the American flag in there for the, you know, the, did the national anthem before the show, and my friend kind of volunteered me, and I'm like, okay. I mean, might as well. I mean, you're a veteran, like. Yeah, so it was it was it was nice, nice and something a little unexpected, little treat for the show. You know, yeah. that I'm in the ring for that little bit. Yeah, no, that's that, that's pretty cool though. I uh, yeah, I hadn't wrestled for them since like maybe 2010, maybe if I remember right. I can't remember that. That was one of my first outside bookings I've ever taken. So. Okay, yeah that that would have been when I'm I was still in the Navy. <laughs> I was still I was still a couple of years away from getting out. I was just I was just telling somebody I've been wrestling since I was 18 years old, and that was back <laughs> in 2008, 2007, 2008. I started in 2008, I think. I can't really remember, but okay. huh? Yeah. All so, right. <laughs> yeah so i was just telling like i was just telling one of the guys at the magnum show that wrestles they're like we're about the same age why do you walk around like such an old man i'm like well i've been doing this a lot longer than you have (laughs) when i when i first started i wanted to get in the ring i wanted to bump i wanted to you know do everything i could practice stuff now i get to a show and i just get to the locker room and i just sit down in the locker room and tell it's time to go so I'll come out. I'll come out and mingle with you if I see you. And that's about it. Like I don't really. I I go back there. I put my stuff down. I sit down when I get ready to wrestle. Maybe like ten minutes beforehand. I do a couple do a couple stretches. I'll touch my toes, swing my back, and that's about it. Yeah, I me stretching. I I can't really get down to touching my toes anymore yesterday i tried to help my wife with moving some stuff but finally trying to get back into our house that got renovated and i got to the point where i could barely stand up straight without my back feeling like it was compressing down on itself it sucks getting old doesn't it yeah (laughs) it's no fun i hurt my back in the navy and it's only gotten worse yeah i i've even got a little beer gut going on here lately so like, no, touch- yeah, oh, I, I got that myself. So touching touching my toes are a little bit harder than what it used to be, but <laughs> I, uh, I actually kind of surprised myself. I haven't really done too many dives since I came back in February. Yeah. So in my match with uh, Devin Thomas from Sunday, I uh, I did a suicide dive through the ropes. I I flew like a feather, man. <laughs> I don't know where that came from, but I actually I, I flew. I was like a little human torpedo. Nice. Uh, speaking of dives, I actually saw a pretty impressive one on the going back to the Cage of Survival show. A team that I guess returned to GCW after like four and a half years. This Los Macizos. I can't pronounce the damn name, but mm-hmm. I know you're one yeah, of know. them. Yeah, one of them was standing on the apron. And he kind of had his legs spread out, and the other guy ran ran the ropes on the his way back, 
boat through the roof through the other guy's legs and hit the guys. It was like holy shit. I might I might have to I might have to walk, like go back and get these events because I've been kind of I wanted to watch them this weekend, but I just didn't really have the time to. So and I end up passing out at like eight o'clock on a Saturday. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. But neither one of them are really that expensive. I think fifteen bucks at the most on fight. Uh, they got a they've got a package deal on there like twenty two dollars. Like twenty three bucks, you can get both shows. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. No, they they do have those for their double shot weekends where like you can get both for like yeah, like twenty twenty five bucks somewhere yeah. in there. So I mean, yeah, no, of them buy TV credits too. No, that's actually what I did. I had the one already. And then I looked up how many fight credits I had because I was just going to get the one. And then I'm like, well, I got enough fight credits to order this other one. So went and ordered the other one. Oh, there you go. I was pretty, <laughs> uh, I was pretty interested in the cages. What was it? Cage of survival. Yeah. So I kind of want to watch that one. I, uh, I always, I'm kind of a I'm kind of a fan of John Wayne Mur or I'm not kind of I am a fan of John Wayne Murdoch like he's he's really good so oh, yeah Alex Cologne good too so I enjoy watching those guys especially like watching them you know wrestle each other oh yeah and I mean I figured since I'm gonna be interviewing the both of them for the show I might as well get that one so I can watch that match yeah and you <laughs> all in the same week which is nuts yeah it's like i get one well yeah literally a little over a week apart from watching the the cage of survival show i get to interview both of them so it's kind of crazy yeah that's pretty, that's awesome though like i'm glad you're like getting out and like getting some people on your show and stuff i'm really like i'm really proud of you like knowing <laughs> like knowing you it's like 2015 all the way to now. Yeah, um, it, it, it's kind of crazy. I never would have thought I'd get to talk with some of the people that I've been getting to talk to. Like, I didn't get to talk to some of these guys for the show when I was down in St. Louis, but you know, I got to talk to everybody. Like, oh, you know, Alex Coughlin from uh, New Japan. He was down there. He was the first guy to come up and introduce himself. I got to talk to Jeff Cobb. I got Janai Kai. Uh, no, obviously, I got to talk to. Actually, got to talk to for the joke the the show Jonah, and you know Lance Archer and shit. It was like holy fuck. Yeah, no, nah, man. Like you're doing really good, man. Like I'm I'm really impressed, dude. Like I'm really proud of you too. Like. Especially like, you know, you're stepping out of a comfort zone too, like when you're used to just talking with like the Omaha boys and like, <laughs> yeah. Like you're really doing something, man. Like I'm really I'm really proud of you. I, that that means a lot. I I definitely it definitely started off with, you know, you know, let's see you know, talk with some of the local guys I know and then some nationally known people started liking some of the stuff on Twitter, so I'm like, hey, let's see if it works. Might be a long shot, but here. And for the most part, it's worked. Well, Wayne Gretzky even said you miss you miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take. Yeah, I, that's that's I, I mean the way I've been looking at it. I I, I see on the Twitter like hitting these people up too and stuff, so that's cool. Like and they're <laughs> They're being responsive, which is really nice because, like, sometimes you kind of run into like dickheads that won't respond and, like, yeah, you know. But like, you know, wrestling's kind of wrestling's kind of changed a little bit over the years, and like, you know, we're like <coughs> we appreciate the fans, and like, you know, you give us like, you know, you pay you guys pay your hard earned money to come and watch us and come, you know support whoever you want to support boo whoever you want to boo but like you know it's really it's really cool to see that like wrestlers are really like you know giving back as well you know i mean we do yeah. get 
like we give with our bodies and we you know yeah and to be honest like it it hurts when we're in there you know but yeah. like we're all giving back a little bit more which is which is awesome to see and even like the bigger name guys you know it's given their time and stuff you know like i'm just some little joe schmo that wrestles in Omaha, <laughs> you know but like you got guys like you know john wayne murdoch you got guys like alex cologne who's taking you know time out of their day to like you know talk to you for however long they want to talk with you like you know it's, it's so awesome to see like you know wrestlers are still you know they're giving even more back to the fans which are which is really cool oh yeah and i mean some ones that i haven't really divulged on the show that have uh, well one i've confirmed a date for two others i'm having to wait till next month for their schedules to clear up but uh billy starks july 5th yeah. i get a record with her and like for somebody at such a young age, she's already accomplishing so much. Oh, yeah. And then, uh, well, not really wrestler, but she's involved in wrestling and a lot with GCW, Polio Del Mar. Mm-hmm. I, she's expressed interest in doing the show, just asked for me to get in touch with her next month. And some of the people, some of my really good friends that are wrestlers down in Southern California, uh, they got me in touch with, uh, well, the former personal ring announcer for uh, Alberto Del Rio, Ricardo yep. Rodriguez. He's just asking me the same to... Uh, you know, get in touch with him next month when his schedule clears up. Heck yeah, man. So it's, it's pretty cool. You know, I, like, I remember, I mean, with him in particular, I was at the last ever show that he did on the Indies before he went to WWE. It, and I believe when he came up here to Magnum, they actually posted on, I believe, YouTube or Facebook or something, the video of that match, which I believe was against Jason Strife. Okay. And he, you can actually see me sitting in the front row. Yeah. Which I thought that was cool enough for me to see that. But I remember the match in particular because... Like I said, his last one before leaving for WWE, and he competed under a mask under the name Chimera. And at the end of the match, he goes back through the curtain, and then all of a sudden you see his hand come out of the curtain with the mask, and he just drops the mask. Mm -hmm. I thought that was a pretty cool way to go out. Yeah, that, that's pretty neat. I, uh, yeah, I, that's probably around the time that like Strife was trying to get like the whole Magnum brand like in the Southern California area too. Cause I know they would do like showcase matches out there. Like when Magnum was very first starting. I actually went to a handful of those. Yeah. Because that was still when I was uh, still stationed in San Diego and I'd see, I'd see them pop up every once in a while. And actually at that particular show that I, that uh, you could see me in the video of. I actually talked with Strife after, and that's where he told me about, oh, yeah, they run Magnum up here. And I'm like, oh, I'm from there. So when I came back, I looked looked it up, and, well, here we are. Yeah. <laughs> and when did, when did you come back to, to Nebraska? It would have been, boy... 2012 so jesus about 10 years ago now okay so then like when was your first magnum show in nebraska oh boy i'm trying to remember i, I oh boy i'm having was it when they, when they ran in the armory no this this was back at the the eagles club they hadn't even gotten out of there yet oh okay I remember it in particular 
because uh, a guy we kind of brought up that you had one of those tie paid death matches with Joey, he came by. I was wearing a hat, kind of like you know, if you're what you watch the YouTube version, kind of like the one I'm wearing now. And he came by and just whoop, knocked it off my head. Uh, <laughs> it was kind of crazy. Was, was, was Guns and Beer going then? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes, I believe. And you know what? I believe you actually competed twice that show. Once as Guns and Beer. Oh, uh, and then the other time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Red Wing is boy. So, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I, I had a, yeah, I had no, a char- character complex there. There would be a couple shows that I'd run. It's like <laughs> strong man Williams, all sorts of jacked, and then I'd come out as a hillbilly. <laughs> it, it, it's kind of weird, yeah, like no west, like Western Iowa. I'd be the hillbilly, and then like, uh, like Central Iowa, I'd be William Stone. Then Eastern Iowa, I'd be a hillbilly, like. It was something different almost every weekend. So <laughs> that's funny. Like it, all it was, honesty, it was, I was just trying to see what I was just trying to see which one would you know would work better, and it ended up being like guns and beer worked a lot. Yeah, no, guns and beer really caught on oh, there. Man, even oh, though I did got like, or what did like, you say there? Like both. Like both characters would like make people so like that mm. like I, I enjoy people's faces you know I'm a terrible <laughs> like I, I, tell, I tell everybody like you know you can you can book me as a heel but I'm a terrible heel so <laughs> like I am like even like when I was doing like the scary face paint stuff like I was never comfortable with being <laughs> like, you know it Definitely, certain people are a little more comfortable with it than others. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but uh, anyways, the I got two categories that I used to kind of round off the show here. One we kind of did that first time you were on. The other I added a random question round where. I got some random questions. You answer how you see fit. All right, sounds good. Do the uh, math, buddy. We'll start off with. <laughs> we'll start off with the speed round, and you know, I've started to kind of theme them towards the guests, and with you know, this one kind of centering around death matches and the death match daddy. I figured I'd name off some people that are kind of synonymous with death match wrestling. First off, they say he's the god of this shit. Nick fucking Gage. Uh, the best rest, best deathmatch wrestler going. Uh, hard to argue that. Definitely, you hear people talk about, you know, different things with wrestling. You know, the, the Mount Rushmore of this, the Mount Rushmore of that. It would be hard to argue against him being right up there for deathmatch wrestling. Mm-hmm. I agree. Next person, a person I personally believe would be right up there with Nick Gage, the bulldozer Matt Tremont. Yeah, I, I would say he's right up there with Nick Gage. Like those guys are such good storytellers. Mm. Like that's yes. that's like there's there like even without death match wrestling, they are very like they're such good storytellers. Oh yeah. No, Matt well, Tremont I would definitely. Say, I, I would say he's the best storyteller deathmatch wrestler. Yeah, I would have to agree. He definitely did a great job of that in the tournament of survival. I kind of got a laugh out of uh, his match in the finals, not to spoil anything, but he. The way he was wielding the light tubes was almost like he was using a light tube as a lightsaber. He was flipping it around. Yeah, I'm gonna have to. I think maybe Friday I might I might order it. We'll see what happens. It, I got it, I got, I got a pretty. It's long, worth it. 
Yeah, no, with your oh. with, with your with your work schedule, yeah, no, I can totally understand. Next one, going a little bit further back, but this guy is still going. I'd say you could probably put him right up there on that Mount Rushmore with the other guys. Onita. Uh I'm trying to think. Like this is speed round, so like uh Godfather Deathmatch Wrestling. Perfect. Perfect. Couldn't figure out a better way to put it. You know, you're mentioning all these people that would be on a Mount Rushmore. I think my Mount Rushmore deathmatch wrestling might be completely different than yours. <laughs> well, you know what? After we get done with the speed round, why don't I have you kind of name off yours? Okay, sounds good. Last but not least on the speed round, the guy that won the tournament of survival drew parker i haven't watched a whole lot of his stuff so i can't really make like an opinion like i've seen like a couple matches and he's really good oh yeah no i definitely i mean i'm not as familiar with him as i am with the other guys that we named off but uh whew, let me tell you he impressed the hell out of me in that tournament and I'd say he's at the top of my list of guys currently going. Cool. Yeah, like I, I haven't got to see a whole lot of his matches, so I would but like the stuff that I have seen I've really liked. So all right. Well, we kind of mentioned your uh, Mount Rushmore deathmatch wrestling maybe being a little different than mine. Why don't we go ahead and name off yours? All right, so first and foremost, uh, Sick Nick Mondo. Okay, you know, I mean, Mount Rushmore has more than just the three that I mentioned. He would, yep. it would be hard to argue against him being on there. That is for sure. Um, second one would be John Zandig. You know what? I completely forgot about him. I don't know how I forgot about him, but again, hard to argue against him being on that. And then the one that we agreed upon, uh, Nick Gage. Yes. And then my fourth one, like, because he's he was my favorite wrestler when I was getting into wrestling, uh, Danny Havoc. Ooh. Yes. Yes, that would be another great one. I don't know how I missed even mentioning those guys. Yep. That, that is my Mount Rushmore of wrestling my death match wrestling yeah no i mean you talk about each one of those guys zandig i mean he was the guy behind czw when you know they were really into the death match stuff yep and i mean danny havoc he's whew. i mean if they call uh nick gage the god of that shit i mean shit danny havoc and i mean even Nick Mondo, they got to be right up there with them. Oh, yeah. Totally. Yeah, that, All right. Or... Oh, no, you kind of cut out there a little. Uh, yeah, that's fine. I said that would be but, my amount of deathmatch wrestling. For me, like, just as, like, a fan, like, that would be. Oh, yeah. No, hard to argue with any one of those guys. Um, All right. Last category here, kind of a random question around, like I said uh, before. First thing, I mean, I know you got crazy work schedule, but when you do have a day off, what is your favorite thing to do? To be honest with you, I'm a real boring person. And I just like to lay, <laughs> I like to lay in bed and watch TV. <laughs> hey, when it comes to a day off and like, you can actually do that. Why the hell not? Yes. In between having like three kids uh, and then working all the time, like I just like to lay in bed and watch TV. That's like my favorite thing to do. You know, hey, sounds like a perfectly relaxing time to me. <laughs> all right. We kind of talked a little bit about th some stuff along these lines when the, the first time you were on, but uh, craziest road story. 
I have a lot that I probably can't tell. <laughs> well, one that you can't. I, uh, I got to try to go back and think. Oh, <laughs> definitely driving 24 hours to get home from North Dakota back to Iowa in a blizzard with Ooh. with Devin Thomas, Duke Cornell, Donnie <laughs> Pickett, and Jason oh. Strife. And I can't, there's, there's some, I think John West was in that car too. Okay. Yeah. It was, <laughs> uh, it was the worst 24 hours of my life, possibly the worst 24 hours of Devin Thomas's life. Cause he was driving most of that time. Oh, damn. Like it was literally a whiteout condition. They closed the freeway off. We had, to, <laughs> we had to take back roads to get even into Minnesota. Oh God. <laughs> we had, we had to cut through Minnesota down to Iowa and then back to Nebraska. Oh there was, God. Like there was no way we could get, we, we were getting home. <laughs> and I'm, I, I'm surprised we even got home safely. I guess I should consider myself lucky. The one time I went up to North Dakota for a show, I believe it was in like spring or mid spring sometime. Mm hmm. So didn't have to worry about that. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I remember the night before I'm like, guys, we should probably just like probably pack up and take off. And everybody's like, oh, it'll be gone by the morning. It was not gone by the morning. We should have definitely <laughs> took off if we were done wrestling. <laughs> yeah. No like, one of those you learn. I got home. I got home at six in the morning on Monday. Oh, and I had to be at work at three. Oh gee. No. Oh, that that's no fun. So that, that's that's one of my lighter crazy wrestling stories. <laughs> um, no, no, I also, no one, I you were saying I, I shattered my elbow in the ring back in 2011. That was pretty crazy. That, yeah. that was definitely the worst wrestling story that I've had. Mm. Yeah, that that would have to be right up there. Uh, oh, I know. My, one of my craziest wrestling-related stories had to be that trip I did up to North Dakota. Sorry, you're probably hearing my dogs right now. But uh, I remember the after party, there was me drinking with uh, Eric Cannon, uh, the now Ruby Soho, and they had karaoke at the bar. And I... I was probably fucking hammered by this time. And I just remember hearing this song and I'm like, man, I got to go see what this song is before I know it. Somebody's putting a microphone in my face and I'm sit drunkenly singing the puddle of mud song. She fucking hates me. <laughs> I'm surprised I even remember all that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, that's what those, that's what those road stories are for they're supposed to be fun and hopefully you remember them some of them i don't remember i mean it happens yeah i mean i know i've had plenty of well plenty of uh drunken uh deployment stories that <laughs> I probably i probably don't remember all the details <laughs> yeah i got you but uh next one on the random question round Favorite food? Pizza. Hard to argue with that one. It's right up there with I, my favorites. I could probably eat pizza every day. What would you say is your favorite pizza? I don't got one. You don't all, got one? Just all, you know, you, you put right. a pizza in front of you, you'll eat it. If it's a veggie pizza, I'll eat a veggie pizza. You know, I would have... Like, I... I can say that I definitely have my ones that I like more than others, but shit, you put a pizza in front of me, I'll eat it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Next one, I've asked a few, and you know, I'll ask you this one. Best advice for new wrestlers? Um, pretty much eyes and ears open and mouth shut. Take in, you know, that seems to be everybody's answer. Uh, take just taking what advice that would pertain to you, you know, professionally and personally, you know, and 
try to learn as much as you can. You know, that that seems to be the consensus answer whenever I ask that question. I've asked it of, uh, I believe, well, you're the third person now. I asked Tank it yesterday. And uh, ROH original Scoot Andrews, I asked him the week before. So seems to be the consensus answer. And I mean, you can really apply that to hell life in general. You know, if you're in a situation that you're new to, shut up and listen. Yep. All right. Well, where can people find you as far as social media? And, you know, do you, any events coming up? Because I know uh, Magnum just announced that they're, show that was going to be later this month isn't happening yep uh strife Stry- i think strife's going to take a little bit of time off not too much like he's going to have uh, uh he's going to have uh, on july 1st there's going to be at the halloween hell house in mm. Glenwood, iowa um and then he's going to probably be running at the end of the month in july uh you can find me on social media though at bogot uh, G and B on Twitter. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at Brian got 88 and you can find, I, I try to start directing people more to my fan page now. So it's Bo got on. Yeah. All right. I'll provide links in the description box on the YouTube version. Um, that is about all I have for you. Thank you for taking the time to talk to me. I know, like we mentioned kind of off camera, you got a bit of a busy work schedule lately. So I appreciate you helping me out here. I has got time for you, Big Mo. You know that. Oh, I know. Well, like I said, that's about all I have for tonight. Thank you very much. All right. See you later, buddy.